the sign. And the message to them from the Quran is that you will suffer the same fate that he suffered. وَإِنَّ كَثِيرًا مِنَ النَّاسِ عَنْ آيَاتِنَا لَغَفِلُونَ But most people, too busy, <laughs> too busy to study the signs of Allah. There is an emerging political dictatorship around the world today. And the United Nations organization was created to facilitate the emergence of that political dictatorship. Why do those who control the UN, why do those who control politi political power, why do they want to establish the universal dictatorship? Why is democracy receding in the world today? Anti-terrorism laws encroaching on human rights. Why? It is because there is a plan being pursued. It is not by accident that Britain had a mysterious relationship with the Holy Land. It is not by accident that Britain gave us the Balfour Declaration, a secular Britain, in 1917, that the British government will work for the establishment of a Jewish national home in the Holy Land. Why? Why a secular state wants to establish a religious state in the Holy Land? I'll tell you why. Because there is a plan at work. Why does the United States use the veto in the Security Council so many times we can't count anymore? They don't have any shame to protect Israel so the baby can grow to become a powerful state, to become a superpower, to become a nuclear armed state, to, be, to have thermonuclear weapons while I Iran is being targeted. Why the relationship between the United States and Israel. I'll tell you why. Only one man can explain that answer, that question. And it is a man named Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is because the first ruling state in the world, the modern world of Britain, had to give way to a second ruling state in the modern world the United States of America, in order that a third ruling state might emerge, which will be the last ruling state, and which must rule the world eternally, so that a man can emerge in Israel, who will be ruling Israel, and who would rule the world from Jerusalem. And that man would declare, I am the Messiah. We know it in Islam, if you don't know it. We know it, and we can explain it to you. That man is the Antichrist. That man is the Jal, the false Messiah. And unless you study this subject, your understanding of international politics, your understanding of international economics, your understanding of international monetary economics would be inadequate. Israel, however, cannot rule the world until Israel wages a big war and the territory of the state were to expand dramatically to encompass the biblical frontiers, the false biblical frontiers, of course, from the river of Egypt to the river Euphrates. Israel cannot wage that big war so long as Pakistan has nuclear weapons. And so all the maneuverings on the chessboard in Pakistan and in northwestern Pakistan and in Afghanistan does not fool us. We know what's your target. We know that your target is to destroy Pakistan's nuclear plants, destroy Pakistan's nuclear weapons, and remove Pakistan from the nuclear club. Because so long as Pakistan possesses nuclear weapons, it poses a threat 
to Israel in her ambition to rule the world. Similar is the case with Iran and its missile capacity. If this is the political scenario to which, which we are moving in the world, what is the economic linkages with that political scenario, this political analysis? In order for Britain to become a ruling state, Britain had, among other things, among other things, Britain had to control money in the world. It was not by accident, but rather by design, that the Bank of England emerged in 1697, I think, and began issuing the first paper currencies. And these paper currencies were supposed to be redeemable. That is, you could take it to the bank and get the gold. And then, of course, if I did it, they'd lock me up and throw me in jail. You issue more paper than you have gold. You create money out of nothing. And then when the people realize that there's a run on the bank and the whole thing collapses and people are ripped off. It happened at the end, at the end of the 17th century. And the same thing has been repeating and repeating and repeating again and again and again and again. When the Bretton Woods Accord emerged in 1944, it was just an, a more sophisticated arrangement for precisely the same scam. By 1971, Bretton Woods had collapsed so that the scam could move forward. The US dollar is the only currency in the world which was redeemable in gold at $35 an ounce. All the rest of the paper money in the world were not redeemable. They're like checks you can't catch. You could only change one check for another at a fixed exchange rate. But in 1971, when Charles de Gaulle inter intervened in the matter, Bretton Woods collapsed. Richard Nixon declared, we gave our word, we don't have to keep our word. And he reneged on his treaty obligations under Bretton Woods and the Articles of Agreement of the International Monetary Fund. And so since 1971, it's just paper. You take a piece of paper, you're not going to believe me. You take a piece of paper, since 71, you print a picture on it, you put a number on it, and you say, abracadabra. <laughs> and you assign an entirely fictitious value to it. We have in our gathering here a distinguished diplomat of the Trinidad and Tobago Foreign Service, my colleague who is here before me, who knows this subject. This is playing God to create wealth out of nothing. And one day they'll have to stand before Allah and answer to him. Because the only way you can create wealth out of nothing by assigning this fictitious value to the piece of paper is that when someone takes that paper, uses it, boy, you have any more US dollars? Come, 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 come. The more you accept that money, the more you are made to accept it because you can't sell oil other than in US dollars. You can't trade, you can't travel. You need hard currency. Ours is soft, you know. That keeps their paper alive. So they can print and print and print and print paper. And the Saudis just keep on sending and sending and sending the oil. That's playing God. But that's not the only part of the scam through which they maintain their power and their control. It's not just military power. It's more than that. 